find the indefinite integral using partial fractions. Okay, 3x squared plus 2 over x squared plus 1, x squared minus x dx. So the twist to this one is that we're going to have distinct linear factors, and we're also going to have quadratic factors that don't factor any further over the real numbers. Okay, but these quadratics are only going to appear with power 1, so they'll be distinct. We proceed as usual. I'll have my 3x squared plus 2 over x squared plus 1, x, x minus 1, and I'm going to set it equal to a bunch of rational functions where the denominators are just going to be my different factors. So we'll have c and d over x and x minus 1 as we did before. The little twist for this problem now is when I have distinct quadratics, what I need to put upstairs is going to be ax plus b. Because I have an x squared in the bottom, I'm going to need to have an ax up in top in case I need to correct. Once we have this, then everything proceeds as normal. We're going to clear the denominators, and then we have to figure out how are we going to find a, b, c, and d. Two methods, they're more or less the same, but the idea is, depending on how things are set up, you may prefer one over the other. For method one, we're going to take a polynomial on this side, a polynomial on this side. If each side is equal to the other side, then that means the powers of x have to match up, meaning the constant term, let's go fish for constant terms. On this side, it's a 2. On this side, the only way I get a constant term is going to be if I take minus 1 times 1 times c. So we'll have 2 equals minus c right off the bat. I'm going to match up all the x terms. On this side, there's no x term, so that's going to be a 0. On this side, well, we'll have to fish a little bit. Here, the only way I can get an x term is minus bx, so it turns into a minus b. Here, the only way I can get an x term is going to be c times x times 1. And then here, the only way to get an x term is d times x. Now, note you don't want to do it the way I'm doing it, by picking them out. Probably you would just want to expand all these and then just collect your terms, and then you'll see these fall out. So we can proceed like that. And then that will give me my next two equations also. Since you haven't had linear algebra yet, solving four equations and four unknowns is probably not in your bag of tricks. So we can still use our techniques from before where we target the roots that will at least grind this thing down to two equations and two unknowns. Okay, Really, this is three equations and three unknowns since we already have C. But targeting the roots will help us break it down. So if I go with x equals 0, we're just going to reproduce the c equals minus 2 that I already know about. If I set x equal to 1, we're going to have 5 on this side. And then on this side, everything's going to go away except for this term, which will turn into 2d. So we get d equals 5 halves. Now, if I look at the x equation, that's going to tell me b is equal to c plus d. So that's going to be 5 halves minus 2, which is 1 half. And then if I look at the x cubed, that's going to tell me that a is equal to minus c minus d. So if we look at those, that's going to turn out to be minus a half. So that way gets me my coefficients. The only problem is if these four equations have a lot more terms in them, this may not be reasonable to work out. OK, for my second method, I want to use derivatives to grind down my equations and then target. So if I target the roots, we'll get the c equals minus 2 and the d equal to 5 halves again. What I want to do now is if I have two polynomials that are equal to one another, if I take the derivative on each side, it'll still be an equality. So first derivatives, I'm going to get a 6x on this side. Then on this side, we're going to use the product rule a lot, and that's just going to expand out to be whatever this turns out to be. I'm not going to bother cleaning it up. I just want to get myself down to all constants and then start working my way back up. Here, we're going to take the derivative of this side, gives me a 6. And then again, I'm just going to take the derivative of this big mess, and then we see what comes out. And then finally, I'm going to take the third derivative of each side. So it's going to be derivative of 6, gives me 0. And then over here, 
it's just going to pick up a lot of constant terms. So that'll be 6a plus 6c plus 6d equals 0. Then I could solve a equal to minus c minus d, and that gives me my a equal to minus a half. Notice there's nothing special about this because we've already found this equation using it with method 1. Okay, but that gets me my a. And now in 2, this one, if I let x be equal to 0, note I'm targeting a root, so this is something we, couldn't have, we could have done anyway. That's going to give me 6 equals minus 2a plus 2b minus 2c. And then when you crunch things, that's going to give you your b equals a half that we've seen before. So note here, for this example, this isn't really giving us much more than what we've already done in method 1. But depending on the example that you're looking at, this may be a little bit better. If we look, we have four pieces that we need to get a handle on. So I'm going to take this first part, break it into two indefinite integrals. Then these two pieces we can just do right away. So we're going to take our minus 2. The antiderivative of 1 over x is natural log absolute value of x. Here we have 5 halves. If I use substitute out x minus 1, du is going to be equal to dx. So we're just going to get, again, a natural log absolute value of x minus 1 here. So these two terms are taken care of. We separate these out nicely. This one, not so bad. If you recognize that this is the antiderivative of tan inverse of x, done right away with a half out in front. And then we just need to do a little bit of work on this guy, but if you notice, 1 plus x squared in the bottom, the top is just the derivative of the bottom almost. So I can substitute out the u equal to 1 plus x squared du is 2x dx, dx equals du over 2x, and now I can substitute in and just polish this off. So you'll notice a half will come out, giving me minus a quarter, and then I have du over u because the x's go away. So that's just going to be natural log absolute value of u, and then when I put u in, I have 1 plus x squared on the inside. So, okay, also note, while I'm doing these, I'm also going to slowly massage these into a better form so that we can combine all the natural log terms together at the end. So this will turn into natural log of x squared here. This will turn into natural log of x minus 1 raised to the 5 halves. So we could take numbers in front, put them inside as exponents. Okay, in this last step here, I'm just going to take the difference. We have natural log x minus 1 5 halves minus natural log of x squared so the x squared can come in to this natural log as long as I put it in the bottom because of the minus sign. So now all I need to do is take the natural log 1 plus x squared with the minus a quarter. The minus a quarter, well, the quarter can come up as an exponent, and then the minus sign says we have to put it in the bottom. So we'll have this, x squared 1 plus x squared to the 1 fourth. Underneath, x minus 1 to the 5 halves absolute value, and then inside a natural log, plus the one-half tan inverse of x, plus a constant. Okay, in theory we should check this, but this thing is so messy that I'm really not up for a product and a quotient rule and all that good stuff at once. So we'll assume this is correct enough. The main point is the technique.